by the Joseph Business School, where we bring you up-to-date money news for your personal finances and businesses. Be sure to tune in every first and third Monday of the month to hear a new money topic. I'm your host, Jill Thompson. For those of you who are tuning in for the very first time, welcome. Today on our podcast, we have a guest who's no stranger to Money Mondays, Melissa Duff Brown. Melissa is the director of the Joseph Center Business Development, director of the Illinois SBDC, ITC, and PTAC at the Joseph Center, and dean of the small business program at the Joseph Business School. She is the current president of the Illinois Entrepreneurship and Small Business Growth Association, a member of the America's SBDC Professional Development Committee that is responsible for the annual training conferences for over 1,000 small business development centers across the country. In 2018, Melissa was honored at America's SBDC National Convention as the 2018 Illinois SBDC State Star because of her outstanding leadership, guidance, engagement, and support provided within the Illinois SBDC Network. Money Monday audience, help me welcome to the segment, Melissa Duff Brown. Thank you so much for having me back. I'm excited. It's always a pleasure to have you. So Melissa, we know the Illinois SBDC, ITC, and PTAC centers have provided workshops and trainings to over 36,000 people and have 18,000 hours of one-on-one counseling, assisting over 3,800 aspiring entrepreneurs. During this time, over 200 companies have launched, creating and retaining over 2,400 jobs with 469 contracts and securing a dollar value of of over $734 million. Melissa, you wear a lot of hats. Can you tell us about these figures? (laughs) Well, we are working diligently to assist business owners at every stage of development. One of the really wonderful things, uh, uh, the Joseph Center and the Joseph Business School have had a relationship with SBA through the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity in Illinois to have an SBDC since 2006. And we've grown to have all three designations, which there are not a lot of locations in the state of Illinois and across the country that fly all three flags. So we're excited about that. Melissa, tell them what the acronyms acronyms mean for those who don't are not familiar with SVDC or ITC or even PTAC. Certainly. So SBDC stands for Small Business Development Center, and that designation assists entrepreneurs at every stage of development for all your general business needs. So that's helping you understand and plan your business plan, creating different strategies, whether it be marketing, assisting you with economic uh, 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 access to capital, helping you uh, uh, with intellectual property, helping you understand and find additional clients. Anything that goes with the general operation of a business, that's what SBDC does. Okay, now, awesome. PTAC is the Procurement Technical Assistance Center. And so that primary function is for those that are interested in government contracting at a local, state, and federal level. So this entity, and, uh, and which has secured you know, $734 million in contracts, that's real money. That's not, you know, we thought about it. It's real people have access to $734 million in government contracts through our assistance. And so we help people to locate potential opportunities as well as complete the RFPs. And another important part of what the Procurement Center does is for those that are interested in socioeconomic certifications. So if you want to be a woman-owned business, a minority-owned business, a hub, a hub zone business, an 8A certification, or a veteran-owned business, we can help you secure those certifications and then find out what contract set-asides are available for you. And last but definitely not least is the International Trade Center. So once you've kind of perfected your business model and you've been in business for a while and you're really clear on who your target market, we can help you find a mirror market in another country because 95% 95 of the buying public is actually out side of the United States. And so we can help you connect and create a plan for growth and to sell your services and products outside of the United States. That's awesome. what it me. Awesome. So your department is really all about the money. And so for our business owners who are listening or even 
aspiring entrepreneurs, they need to know that the SPDC as well as the PTAC and ITC centers are where they need to go for these resources or even information about starting their business. Melissa, just kind of taking a toll back, we know that you came on our segment in 2020 to talk about the different PPP loans and economic disaster loans and things that were available to business entrepreneurs during the pandemic, really the beginning of the pandemic. And so right now you're back on our segment again because clearly there's more money available. So mm -hmm. can you talk about the economic aid that's available to small businesses? Absolutely. So in December of 2020, uh, Congress passed the second stimulus package or what's called the Economic Aid Act. And with that, there's several things that have been addressed. One is the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Advance, of course, PPP, and then there's also SBA debt loan relief for those who currently have SBA loans. And then finally, there is something called shuttered venue operator grants for those people who have theaters, live entertainment, or banquet halls that have been severely impacted. So in this act, there is support for all of these areas. Wow. And so, Melissa, can you talk of any people that you've helped really within the past year? I'm sure 2020 was quite busy for the Small Business Development <laughs> Center. <laughs> it was very busy. It was very busy. Uh, uh, we helped a tremendous, I think we probably did 48 webinars. And then our team was meeting with people on, our, on a regular basis. And, and we've helped people to secure just under $3 million in aid. Uh, from very from EIDL, EIDL Advance, and PPP. Now, one of the really interesting things about the new appropriations package is they really wanted to add some things that weren't in the package last year. For example, they really hadn't focused on how do they get uh, aid to severely impacted, also low income areas, and then also possibly people of color. How are they able to do that and make sure that they get some of this funding or their fair share of the funding? And so what they're doing with the economic injury uh, a loan advance, many people remember you could qualify for up to a $10,000 uh, advance. At one point, they were just issuing it. And then there's another point where it was based on the number of employees you have, but now no more. So if you were either denied for that advance or did not receive the full uh, uh, $10,000, they are going back to those folks and reviewing their applications. And so if you live in an area that they have designated as low income, and that generally means that there's 20% poverty in, in your census track, uh, you could potentially qualify for this. And so letters have already started going out. So check your email. It will be an invitation for you to submit additional information. And they'll ask you about your, your revenues for 2019 and 2020. You need to be able to show you were impacted and had at least a 30% decrease in revenue. And they will give you the difference between whatever you received for the advance the first time and $10,000. Now, if you didn't apply last time, there's no way to apply for this. They're going back to those individuals that they know need assistance and they're checking their zip codes against certain areas. And now we're doing a weekly, and I'll make sure you have the link, we're doing a weekly update every Wednesday uh, through the month of March so that people can get specifics on each thing. That's good. So Melissa, I just want to reiterate a few things because I don't want to make sure I missed anything. Number one, you said that your center alone had assisted in almost $3 million worth of aid to small businesses. Yes. That is amazing. That's a huge number. I mean, <laughs> That's uh, something happens? truly to celebrate. <laughs> Well, I think what happens is the celebration is because these uh, these are real business owners. These are uh, small businesses. Really, you know, it is really what runs our country. Ninety nine percent of all businesses are small business. When you think about your life, when you go to the dry cleaner, you know, five employees, ten employees, uh, the restaurants, your neighborhood restaurants. Much of what you do, you 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 spend your money with small businesses. So when they're so severely impacted and can't operate, and if 
they have to close and they can't, you know, keep their employees on, that can devastate a community. And so with our whole goal of eradication of poverty, it really uh, is awesome for us to be able to help real people that we know continue uh, uh, to move forward with their dream of entrepreneurship. That's good. And so this kind of leads into my second question. When you were talking, you mentioned the fact that for this second go round, they're going to go back to a lot of people who maybe didn't have complete access to that $10,000 last year, correct? Correct. So what about people who maybe didn't even apply last year at all? Well, if you didn't apply last year at all, you have the opportunity to apply for the economic injury disaster loan. And that is a loan product that will cover working capital. So it's different than PPP because PPP can be forgiven. The EIDL loan cannot be forgiven, but it also is, uh, has very low interest rates. It's a 30 year loan that if you are a for-profit business, your interest rate would be 3.75%. If you are, I don't like to say nonprofit, a tax exempt or 501c3 organization or other, you know, six, 19, it is 2.75%. And with Money Mondays and Wealth Managers, you know, those interest rates don't come around <laughs> a lot. Yeah, and so all. it also offers the individual one year deferment, which means they don't even have to make their first payment until one year after the closing date of this loan. And it can be used for all kinds of working capital, you know, to continue to operate your business, continue to pay your employees. And so that has been reinstated and extended until December 31st of 2021. So people can apply until December 31st of 2021 for the EIDL loan. Okay, awesome. And so with PPP, I know it's specifically for payroll. So I know it covered some payroll and maybe helped out a few businesses last year. Does that also apply again this year? Can they reapply for payroll again this year? Yes, they can. And now there are two different designations and they call it first draw and second draw. So if you got a PPP loan last year, and you fully extended your funds, you don't have to have applied for loan forgiveness yet. You just have to have fully extended, uh, uh, used your money. You can apply for a second PPP loan. However, they've changed the eligibility just a little bit. Number one, they've reduced the number of employees where you could have 500 or less employees. Now you, have, you can only have a maximum of 300 employees. The second thing that's changed in the first draw, you have the ability to get a maximum of $10 million based on your, your payroll. With a second draw, you can only, you max out at $2 million. Now, the other thing for the second draw, you also have to be able to prove that you had a 25% reduction in income. When you have your first PPP loan, all you're going to do is do the payroll calculation. You don't have to prove any mitigation or any, any, any mitigation at all. But the second one you do, you have to be able to prove that there was a 25% decrease in your sales revenue 2019 versus 2020. But they do give you two ways of doing that. You can do it annually where you can compare the whole 2019 and 2020 or you can do it by quarter. So you can pick third quarter 2019 versus third quarter 2020, but you have to do apples and apples. You can't take first quarter 2019 and compare it to fourth quarter 2020. You do have to do those same things. And so they can qualify. And they've added some, some, some additional companies. So certain news organizations, uh, uh, 501c6s, uh, there are additional organizations uh, or types of entities that have been included in this. And also, when you look at the calculation of what you could spend the, the funds on, they've also added general operating expenses. That wasn't a part of the original program last year. That's phenomenal. I mean, general operating expenses, I'm sure there are plenty of entrepreneurs who are getting excited just off that word alone, general <laughs> operations, right? But Melissa, question for you. When we talk about eligibility requirements, I know you've mentioned a lot, but I know that I know last year when we talked about this, we talked about that most businesses had to be in existence for a number of years. Mm -hmm. Can, is it, does those rules still apply? Yes, they still do. 
For the economic injury disaster loan, your business needed to be in operation as of January 31st of 2020. For PPP, your business need to be in existence and operating on February 15th, 2020. And then for the shuttered venue operators grant, you had to be in operation in full operation on February 29th of 2020. Ah, there we go. And mm -hmm. so when we talk about, I'm glad you stated that because too, it makes me think about specifically with the economic injury and disaster loan. I know we hear the word injury, but can you explain that concept of injury to our business owners mm -hmm. so that they have a full understanding of whether they qualify for it or not? Mm -hmm. Well, they all qualify if they have an operating business. Because uh, what happens is generally people are going to SBA when there has been a disaster and it's been a hurricane or it's a, a, a tornado because they provide funds for your business to rebuild, to restore inventory, and to do those kinds of things. But the pandemic caused economic injury because of mitigation guidelines, which means that all, all different local, state, and, uh, 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 and federal governments had requirements that certain businesses shut down. So there was an injury to your economic ability to run your company and to pay your obligations. If it was not for COVID-19, and the guidelines and the shutter in place, you would be able to continue to operate. And so typically how this works is an area has to be declared a disaster zone or a disaster area for that particular event. And so every county in every city in every state in the United States has been declared a disaster area for economic injury due to COVID-19 pandemic. So- you, any business that's operating in full operating would qualify under that. All righty, businesses, you hear that? We all qualify for money. So <laughs> I need you guys to go out what here. And say? Make sure qualify we're to apply. Let me say. Qualify to apply. apply. <laughs> so Melissa, I want to ask you this. So just to simplify, because I know we've talked a little bit about loans. We, you mentioned grants there. If you could just, just kind of simplify it for our audience, you know, just say, kind of telling them what's available. So PPP, is it a loan? Is it a grant? EIDL, is it a loan? Is it a grant? Can you kind of go through that list for them? Certainly. EIDL loan, it's a loan. They will be checking your credit score and determining the ability to repay and all traditional loan uh, uh, requirements, including collateral, are part of that. So if you get more than $25,000, you're going to have to provide collateral. And they'll look at business assets first. And if you don't have sufficient business assets, they're going to look at your personal assets. EIDL Advance will be a grant, uh, considered a grant. You won't have to pay that back. PPP is a loan with a forgivable option. Because it is for payroll, they are not checking your credit. They're just looking at payroll. And then after you receive the funding and spend it on the allowable uses of funds, you upload an application asking for forgiveness. And if everything is qualified, you can receive up to 100% forgiveness. If you don't use it all on qualified uses, that loan term is five years and it has a 10 month deferment. Now the shuttered venues operator grant, that is a grant. So people who are museums or banquet halls, movie theaters, all of those things, they are looking to, uh, they're comparing 2019 to 2020 assets, but with this program, you can get up to almost 50% of your revenues for 2019. So they're giving more. Uh, PPP, you get 2.5% times, 2.5 times your monthly average uh, uh, payroll cost. This other is giving you six months of your average revenue cost. Your rev average revenue, not cost, average revenue. That's good. So Melissa, can you tell us of any uh, business owners that you've helped 
in 2020 that you can really pinpoint and say that this really was an opportunity for a lot of business owners and you know stories of maybe a business or an entity that took advantage of this and there was a success that came out of it well what happens is many times uh, uh um we, we've helped some individuals who were at the time of the pandemic on this road to really uh, 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 ramp up and grow their businesses. And so they had plans, they had invested in additional uh, 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 equipment. Uh, and, and so we, one individual I can think about, and it really is kind of a, a, a wraparound success story because she's a JB, a, a graduate from our Joseph business school, but, mm -hmm. uh, but with Joseph business school and then her working with us, she worked with the procurement technical assistance center, uh, uh, to be able to get her certifications. And then she worked with us to, to, uh, she came to one of our webinars and she applied successfully and, and received a couple of things, uh, uh, I'm not at liberty to say amounts because she hasn't released me to do that. Uh, but because of that, her, her business has flourished. She was able to continue to grow and actually apply for a contract and receive that contract. And so getting that funds allowed her to keep her drivers working. And she was able to say with confidence that she would be able to perform when they asked for proof that she could perform to receive the contract. That but there are also sometimes when there's uh, uh, many people are 1099 workers where they're doing gigs or they're working for as contractors to deliver things for other other folks when those industries are shut down they are shut out and so because ppp as an independent contractor or a sole proprietor you could also apply there are people who can continue to keep their homes something as simple as keeping their homes is important important. That's really, really good. And so as we're looking out on the landscape of small business right now, because we understand that really small business is the backbone of our economy. I know that you've taught us plenty of times before that I know a number you've mentioned, and you could probably correct me if this is wrong, but I know you've mentioned before that over 95% of the small businesses really drive the economy. I don't know if that number has increased, um, if it has decreased within the last few years, but just looking out on where the economy is, what what, do you, what would you say is happening right now for small businesses? Is this a great time to start businesses? What's happening? It actually is a great time to start because what happens anytime you have these major uh, uh, um, impact, it is it is opportune for innovation. Mm -hmm. uh, it is opportune for shifting because now people have to recognize that they have to operate differently. And in this time, they've been, uh, I don't wanna say severe, I think the word would probably be substantial paradigm shifts. And there's certain ways of doing business that are never going back. So people should not say, I want it to be normal again. It is going to be a new normal. And so when we're looking at that, uh, this year, uh, I just attended a session that was a state recap, and we actually had more people start businesses in 2020 than they did in 2019. That and is so, phenomenal. I know. It, it's, really, it's really awesome. And then uh, for people who are looking for new things, for example, when I mentioned SBA loan debt relief, what had happened is someone that had a traditional loan uh, that might be 7A504 or a micro loan that was a SBA product. Last year, at part of the CARES Act, they paid six months of principal interest and fees for people with existing loans so they didn't have to make their own loan payments. So it's not like things are continuing to accrue, they made the payments. So again, if people have current SBA loans, they're going to pay three months of principal interest and fees. And there is a whole list of, 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 of industries, uh, we call them NACE codes, North American Industry Classification Codes. So every business type is part of an industry. And there's certain industries that have been severely affected, like restaurants, accommodations, but there's a whole list of these where they're going to pay five months 
of their loan instead of three months. But if you're looking to grow or start or set up and you get a new SBA loan product right now, 7A, 504, or one of the micro loans, they're going to pay six months of your, of your monthly payments up to $9,000 a month. That's excellent. That's mm -hmm. really, really good. That's phenomenal, Melissa. And so as we're actually talking about this, what are some trending industries right now? What's growing? What's booming? <laughs> Almost anything virtual is booming. <laughs> Online, right? Everything that's primarily online. Technology is taking over. Technology, well, but also those areas, because what happens is it has uh, shifted where people have gotten back to family. And so things that you can do in the home, games, toys, uh, 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 cooking, hobbies, that uh, crafts, uh, all kinds of things now because people are at home. So things to make home more comfortable, uh, and now a lot of the noise has been taken out of people's lives and they're getting back to, you know, who do I want to be? What do I want to do? This is an opportune time that if I don't want to go back to that company, you know, to that job, maybe now I want to, you know, become an entrepreneur. So also there is a, a there's an uptick in training. And yeah. I, we have an upcoming cohort of, of, of our online and our campus. And I think there's a cohort of our executive accelerator program about to launch too. So just a, a plug, you know, I'm always doing a commercial. <laughs> Well, we always appreciate the commercials, but, you know, Melissa, you did mention something there that I just want to reiterate to our audience, which is the fact that even if you're not necessarily a, a small business, right about now, the industry has shifted so much so that there are a lot of people who are now taking um, virtual based positions in corporations and positioning themselves as contractors, which are technically small businesses as well, because they don't want to return to the office after this. I mean, we got to say COVID has spoiled a lot of us since we've been at home and been able to work from home. The things that we've been able to accomplish or even just spending more time with your family mm -hmm. has become priority for a lot of people where they really didn't realize how much time that they were away from the home when they were working a nine to five job inside an actual building. But now that they're able to gain back a lot of that time that they may have missed not being out inside the home. Melissa, can you tell our audience, for those who are listening, if they want more information about uh, PPP and EIDL or even the different grant options that are available or whatever's coming down the pipe um, for small businesses, how they can get in contact with the Small Business Development Center of the Joseph Center? Certainly. Uh, the first way is to give us a call at 708-697-6234. The second way, you can also send us an email with your question or your concerns. It is sbdc at jbs.edu. And you can also visit the SBDC, ITC, and PTAC website. You can go to josephcenter.com or you can go to jbs.edu and then just pick the SBDC and you can connect with us. We have online scheduling links if you'd like to book with somebody and talk about your, your situation one-on-one. -on -one. And we also offer a wide variety of workshops and you can visit our online platform to do that. And also, as I said, we are also doing a weekly update every Wednesday at 3 p.m. about the Economic Aid Act because every week uh, there's additional guidance or sometimes they're uh, 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 revising the program just a little bit. And so we're doing a weekly update on all the loans and grants available uh, each week through the Melissa, month of March. Thank you, Melissa, for coming on our podcast. We appreciate you and the Illinois Small Business Development Center of the Joseph Center for providing our business owners as well as our audience members with this information about how they're going to get their money this year in 2021. We appreciate you. Oh, thank you for having me. And, and let them know, PPP, you have to apply by March 31st. Only EIDL goes to the end of the year. They've already allocated $104 billion. So there's $284 billion left. Get yours. 
Well, Money Mondays, you, there you go. You have it. We want to hear from each of you. If there's a money topic that you'd like for us to cover, be sure to email us at moneymondays at jbs.edu. Don't forget to tune in every first and third Monday of the month to hear a new wealth creation topic or even business related topic as we are trying to get your finances together this year in 2021. Remember, Dr. Winston decreed that this is the year of restoration. Melissa has already told us her SBDC office has secured more than $3 million in funding to small businesses this year alone. And the small, the small Business Association has said that 2020 was the largest year that there have been more entrepreneurs made last year. But let's top that number in 2021. I'm your host, Jill Thompson, and I look forward to seeing each of you prosper. Have a good day, everyone.